What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna discuss Cope, Copa, and how Craig Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto. So I've been quiet about the trial, um, and I guess I'll kind of explain why that's the case and uh, the thoughts about the ecosystem, what's gonna happen going forward, some of the reasoning for why I haven't been posting a lot about this for the last, what, six, seven months or whatever. Um, so yeah, so let's let's go ahead and get into it. So um, the judge in the COPA trial ruled the other day, I think it was Thursday or Friday, whichever day, um, today's Saturday here in the U.S. Um, Craig Wright's not Satoshi. Um, he did not write the white paper. He did not uh, write the code. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, we can, in the BSV space, we need to accept that. Is, and that's the truth. That's what the judge said is the truth. Um, you can't live by the law and not die by it. Um, you know, people on that side asked for this in the courtroom um, for someone who used to believe this stuff. Um, and, you know, change my opinion. It's, it's very clear that it's the truth. And um, people got to accept it. And it's crazy that people are just like, oh, no, he didn't actually say that. It's like it's unambiguous. He said he is not write the white paper. Therefore, he is not Satoshi because Satoshi clearly said he wrote the white paper 16 years ago or yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, it's time to move on from that. And, um, the, the problem in our community is that some of it is in a cult and I was probably a member of that cult at some point. Um, and the issue is you weren't allowed to speak out because you would be threatened with litigation. And that's the reason why I haven't commented on the Copa case, because I'm not going to risk something as fundamental as um, my family's well-being and financial situation because some person on the internet is out there uh, suing people just because they say something bad about them. Um, so it's not going to happen. But now it's the truth. It's in the court record. So any, it's fair game now. Um, and you have to wonder, you know, all the BTC people that got away with this stuff, some of them didn't, right? Which I now understand their positions way better. McCormick, Hall, not. Um, you know, it's messed up what happened. So, um, yeah, so it, <laughs> I'm actually elated about this. I'm very happy. Uh, I hope justice is served. Um, I think this ruling is not enough to stop this. Um, and then we get, we get two more things that occur right afterwards, which is one, um, <laughs> Calvin says goodbye. So apparently he's done. I don't know what that means for tall in chain. BSV ass, which I'm going to get into. Um, I don't know what it means for them, but I would imagine Terra Node. Um, I would imagine these things are not for long. Uh, secondly, Craig got uh, contempt of court. So more law, right? Um, more welcome to law, right? Uh, for, you know, not paying his uh, what he's owed, what he owes there. And there's no money there. Um, and there's probably no more money coming from Calvin. Right. So. Um, so that's that. <laughs> So tons, tons of news. And of course, BSV price drops 20 bucks and it's holding at 90. Um, I'm actually a little bit surprised that it dropped because I thought it was already priced in the fact that he was losing. He was going to lose. I thought that was what was happening last year when it went down to 30 bucks. Um, the reason I think it actually dropped is, you know, I might have still been correct that it was priced in. Um, but one thing I want to point out to people that I, don't, I haven't seen much discussion around is nobody, even no matter which side you were on, no one thought that there would be a ruling that day, right? So I think that's why you had such a reaction. And also uh, the crypto market dropped as well. So, but BSV definitely led it down. And, um, you know, it makes sense to me why that was the case. Because nobody expected a ruling, not even the COPA side, not the BTC side, not us, not not the uh, pro Craig people. Um, you know, I'm talking about them like they're a different faction because yeah, over the last six months, there's been a schism. I've been talking about it on my videos. Um, I mentioned it in the one with Jack, uh, the one I did with the other guys on the um, it's a Spanish YouTube channel about BSV. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, I know people will be able to might be upset that, about my opinions on this. I mean, it is what it is. It's the truth. Um, unfortunately, because uh, folks were threatened with litigation like I have been in the past, um, you have a distortion of the truth. So this is why it's so shocking to people, because you were basically put into this bubble, right? And no information was allowed in 
or out that was dissenting. So because they went around threatening to sue people, which is, <laughs> let's be real, this is why uh, they got del delisted. Um, this is why the coin got delisted now. So now everything's clear, right? We, we, don't have to, we don't have to guess. We don't have to theorize. And this is why I changed my opinion on all this. Uh, it was the leaks from it was the leaks from Kristen Ager Hansen that sent me down a rabbit hole. I actually read all of Arthur Van Pelt's articles, um, which were very helpful in understanding this whole situation that, you know, I was oblivious to and I was blind to. And that was my choice. But, um, you know, knowledge is power and you, you need to learn all the facts. Right. And, you know, um, the funny thing <laughs> is, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know that you're going to get such a uh, take. I'm not trying to buff this channel or anything, but I don't think anyone are going to no one's going to hear this type of opinion. No one's going to hear someone who used to believe that Craig was Satoshi and now doesn't, but still is um, a BSV supporter or a big blocker or whatever. I mean, you're not going to get that. Um, and this this does not mean that I'm selling all my BSV like some of these people are are boasting about on Twitter. I mean, um, yeah, OK, you know, people can do whatever they want. It's their money. Um, so, yeah. So the, the point I was trying to make is um, you couldn't dissenting opinions weren't allowed. So that's what caused this cult to uh, in, in the the trial. The first two weeks I, I was I d was not planning on paying attention to it. Because I wasn't going to cover it. And, you know, I've been, you know, doing more important things around my house. Right. Um, or my car. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but the th first two weeks, I couldn't take my eyes off it, man. It, it, the master class and the only master class that's actually been put on is uh, was in cognitive dissonance. Um, looking at the BTC side, which was telling the story, which was factual and looking at the BSV side which was looking at the exact same thing, but yet coming to a completely different conclusion. It was mind blowing. I mean, I don't know that I'll ever witness anything like that in my lifetime again. I mean, even the, uh, the closest, obviously the number one example I can think of here in the US is Republicans and Democrats and with the Trump thing, right? Um, and the rigging of the election, which, you know, I think is way more gray. I'm not, I don't wanna get into that, but that's a way more gray situation than this, where it's like, this is very cut and dry in my opinion. But because of all these things where you had threaten litigation to silence people or prevent people from speaking out. You had, um, you know, you got BTC, BSV, you have uh, someone clearly, you know, pitching a story that seems plausible to especially more people that uh, are conspiratorial like myself. Um, and, you know, that makes sense because of those, you know, the small blocker versus big blocker and things that have happened in the past. But this, this whole trial and the outcome is extremely revealing um, and, and is now very clear how we push forward here. Um, you know, of course, people are going to think, oh, well, BSV's dead, sell all your coins, get out while you still can. <laughs> um, that's funny uh, because, um, you know, BTC is obviously across this all time high, which I think is a very good thing. And I wouldn't have had this opinion maybe, you know, 18 months ago. Um, but again, a lot of my opinions about this stuff have changed. Um, over the over the last yeah pretty much basically since the start of 2023 um, because I've come to accept what this crypto thing is what this system does um, and you know these these opinions rub up against some of the people who I considered friends uh, you know used to um, and, and I thought we were friends anyway uh, but you know people can't help themselves when it comes to you know temptation to speak out or say crazy stuff out on the internet in the public uh, just because someone has a different opinion. And, you know, that, that you know, it more leads to the, the whole cult aspect that I was talking about. So, um, yeah, in case it's not clear, no, Craig is not Satoshi. Uh, I was wrong about that. As far as the video I did about him um, and the, a lot of the content around that in the past, I think I'll leave it up for now because I think it's better for people if they want to, they can see the evolution of my thoughts in this channel. Um, and that way I'm more accountable to what happened in the past. Um, but now I am firmly, you know, I have to go through all that and make those mistakes about judgment to see the path forward. And of course, people will still say I'm deluded because I'm still, you know, a BSV bag holder or whatever, despite contrary belief. Um, but that's the case. And like what I said on the that Spanish interview uh, about two months ago was generally speaking, I hold more coins tomorrow than I did today. Or today than I did yesterday, right? That's just how it, that's just how it is, and that's not going to stop. Uh, as far as my involvement in terms of building stuff, that's definitely I'm definitely going to step back from that. 
Um, I, I will no longer be writing articles. I will no longer. I might still do videos again. This might be the start of me doing videos again. We'll see. Um, I, I would love feedback around that. You know, if people still uh, aren't pissed off because I actually agree with the BTC people. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. And here's the, but I want to get into the BTC prices and, and what's happening on Solana. I want to get into that because I think that's very important. Um, but I want to address the the whole, um, the narrative stuff within the BSV community. So now that we know that Craig is not Satoshi, we see Calvin leaving and, you know, Craig is, I mean, honestly, uh, criminal charges are probably very likely in that UK case. And this is another thing I haven't seen discussed, definitely not on the BSV side is that I don't know that there's a trial where someone was actively, allegedly submitting forgeries. Um, it's, it's one thing to be tried on a forgery. I know this wasn't a criminal case, but it's another to actually do it during, allegedly. So um, I know that Copa is referring him for that. So and he's got that and then he's got Florida. So And if Calvin step away, I don't think there's any money coming in to fund any of that stuff. And also uh, you, you will see more people speaking out about this stuff, like myself, like a Ryan X Charles, like a Steve Shatters, because that threat is gone. Even though Steve seems to not care. He's, he seems to not really care. And, you know, a lot of stuff he's saying, I actually agree with. Of course not. I don't agree with him about the uh, scaling and what Bitcoin is and all that stuff. Okay. Um, but because of this, what's going to happen is because more people speak out, then you'll get a better picture of what's actually going on and what's actually the truth. Um, and now that we know that the point of these court cases, which all of them are done now, except one around the uh, one VX, I think, about getting that back. And I was wrong about that, too, um, is and that 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 that's chance of succeeding is almost zero. I think the same judge, Melor, is over that one. So, yeah, no way that's happening, which is actually very good for not just BSV, but for the greater community, crypto community, because now the chances of op court sig or what the boomers call Dara or whatever the hell they call that nonsense um about you know taking people stealing people's shit basically um is never gonna happen which is good um and you know i've wavered on that you know i've never been fully for it uh i was in the past i was never fully against it either i went back and forth with it um i acknowledge the pros and cons of each side now i am firmly against it and that is not going to change because bitcoin is free market money and i don't care if people say it's anarchist or whatever i don't give a fuck um this is not we are not going to be stealing people's shit on the ledger because a court said so. That's just crazy. Uh, nothing works like that. Sure, you can get it through the banking system, but you don't get the fungible item that you uh, lost. Like there, It just doesn't happen. If someone steals gold from you, you might get damages. If someone steals um, cash from you, you don't get the exact dollar bills back. It's just crazy. And now we know that that was built on a lie. That's the thing that people need to understand. That whole thing, and the BTC people already knew this. BCH people did, did too. They already figured this out six years ago. Uh, we we're just slowing up, keep because we were psyoped and we fell for it. And it's our fault. So that all that stuff was based off not some some horse and white horse, white knight on a white horse seeking justice. No, it was to take Satoshi's coins that weren't theirs, and he's not Satoshi. So that means he was just trying to enrich himself uh, based off a lie, allegedly, right? But we know for a fact now he's not. It's, in, it's recorded in the court. He's not Satoshi. So, um, so now we can say this stuff without, you know, some crazy person who got funded. That's the other thing. He's gotten funded to do all this. It's not his money. He obtained that money based off him being Satoshi, which he's not. So think about that. And now I understand why folks like McCormick and Hollow are so disgusted with this whole situation. I totally get it now. And it's fucked up. It really is. You know, and I can say this as someone who did get threatened with the lawsuit, but I chose not to fight because of the mentions, the reasons I mentioned before. Um, and, you know, they did, you know, I mean, everyone makes their own decisions, right? Um, there's something to be said for that. There's something to be said for some, the person that um, gives up like I did on that. And I don't regret my decision on that. But anyway, that's his tangent. But now we know. So the op court sick thing, uh, that's that's what we call it. That's what the uh, real Bitcoiners call it. Um, you know, the other people call it the double speak digital asset recoveries. Fucking double speak. Oh, my God. Like, 
It's ridiculous. It's like digital asset recovery, theft of coins, somebody's coins that you don't own. That's what it is. Um, so yeah. So, but now that that's not going to happen, extremely bullish. Um, for again, not just not BSV, the greater crypto community, because now we don't have to worry about, um, you know, coins getting reassigned. It's not going to happen. Um, and the credibility of that side is done. I mean, contempt of court, not a fraud. Just, I mean, not a, uh, <laughs> not Satoshi, but trying to do, trying to show people that he is through the court. Um, so that's all done. So the credibility of that is over. So that that leads me to this NAR thing. Um, frankly, I was disgusted with it. Network access rules. Um, get the fuck out of here. Sorry, I don't care. Um, no, we're not doing that. You limiting people's access to the network based off again. Uh, someone's crusade about making up some bullshit around a unilateral unilateral contract or whatever. Yeah, okay. I don't recall anyone signing a piece of fucking paper when they download the node software and start mining blocks. Um, no, not happening. And it's non-negotiable. We're not doing it. Um, if anything, you know, I thought a fork was possible. I don't even think it's necessary anymore because now that the credibility of that movement is done, um, the chances of any success around that stuff has happened. There's no motivation or money to litigate this stuff if people do it. And, you know, um, I want to, I want to, you know, I don't know how long this video is going to be. Um, typically, I try to keep it around 15, 20 minutes, but this is a special one, I think. Um, uh, it, it, the NAR thing and the language in it was very revealing about, um, again, and I saw this happen five, six years ago with the BCH BSV fork. Um, it really reveals who is actually uh, not a Bitcoiner who is not a block big blocker. Uh, they, you know, they didn't mention the whole OJBK thing. For folks who don't know it, I'll just sum it up. It was basically a mint on BSV where you could get a single token, but the supply was 210 billion. And because of the way the tokens work, it's one UTXO. So this thing was incentivizing the creation of 210 billion UTXOs. And sadly, uh, the community did not like this. Uh, some people even call it an attack, which I'm like, okay, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, so when people actually try to use this thing and scale it, you're like, oh, no, no, hold on. Slow down, cowboy. Uh, that's, that's, those, are, those are two big blocks. That's, you're pushing things too far. It's like, whoa. These, these things are getting mined. Um, and I want to say something. During that time, a lot of apps stopped working. Uh, some wallets even stopped for you the ability to set, uh, to send payments. And I don't know how people, why people don't learn this lesson. Get your shit out of custodial uh, services. I mean, you're going to get racked. I don't know how many times we have to say it, but people insist, right? Um, do not put your shit in something where you can get rubbed. But anyways, during that time, uh, that, oh, that mint was going on and, um, you like what's on chain wasn't working right. Uh, a lot of services, like all the ordinal shit was broken, including some of my sites. Um, yet the price like doubled during that time. Uh, triple that actually. Like, you know, that was the time where it was going from like 40 to like 80 to 90 to 100 and something. And it's just like, hmm. Um, so that means that the functionality in terms of the apps, because the chain was fine, right? The miners were winning the blocks. And that was going fine. It was the services. That was struggling. And we've seen this happen many times where there's been lots of stress on the network. Um, that tells me that the apps built, because a lot of them weren't working. And a lot of them, like the ones that from 2019, 2020, like Relay, uh, Twitch, even though Relay was facilitating some of the minting of this token, you know, they were struggling too. So this tells me that, okay, the apps use usability on top of the Bitcoin ledger have almost no impact on the price. And we, we know this to be true because BTC went to 70K with no on-chain economy. Granted, they have ordinals now and it's debatable how much that influenced the price, especially now that we, we see that the ETF is approved. And um, I, that's obviously extremely positive for the, crypt, for the BTC price. So uh, that tells me that our thesis around all this has been wrong. Um, we need to get back to basics here, um, to the, you know, the people that started this ledger. And we know that it's not this person who is trying to, uh, you know, basically cheat through the court system instead of, uh, you know, just winning the market. So um, again, it's clarity, right? All right. So I hope that makes sense. Um, the, yeah. So obviously I'm against all that stuff. Um, I, again, Bitcoin is free market money. And okay, now let's get into what's happening with BTC 
And then I'm going to talk about the outlook of BSV. So, uh, yeah, BTC hits all time high. I think uh, 73K, uh, frankly, not financial advice is going higher, um, especially to the halvening, which is extremely bullish. Uh, why? Because you have organic demand for this coin via the ETF. Uh, people keep posting about uh, people, folks buying into it and the outflows or whatever. I don't claim to understand all that stuff. All I know is it's demand. <laughs> and it's going higher because people see that this thing is inflation proof. Um, it is, you know, the, again, I've said this many times. People don't like BSV is probably hate when I say this, but it's just, just the truth. It is the most appreciating asset in human history. It's not even close. This is where the libertarians and the free market people who are more fundamentalists get shit wrong. It's just like it's just cope. It's like, dude, you know, imagine being in gold exclusively. Um, well, you know, gold's up like 200 bucks in the last three years, meaning while BTC's 4X, even even when it was like 15K, right? Um, I mean, if you go back further, the, the, the gains become incalculable and it's not going to stop. Uh, you got people like based Michael Saylor figuring out how to basically arbitrage the debt system and the Bitcoin price. And, you know, again, that's going to start pointing out is like, why are people running operations at a company when you have this arbitrage? Like if you can do less work and just eat, you know, basically leverage this paper toilet paper money to get a hard asset. I mean, people are just going to do that. I mean, clear, right? The first people at the gold rush uh, disproportionately made profits over the folks that came later. And, you know, that's not a Ponzi scheme, right? It's just, you know, first is first. So um, it's going to, it's not going to stop. I mean, if, if, if Sailor can pull something like this off, other people are going to start naturally asking the questions like, why, why are we doing all this work to make, middling profits when this guy is just like taking loans at low interest rates and just buying the shit out of this coin and then it's hollowing. Um, and people think, oh, this is unproductive. Yeah, it is unproductive. But you know what? Um, we did not print all this money. Uh, we did not create an inflationary currency. Uh, they're the ones that made this arbitrage opportunity. And Satoshi is the one who recognized the fact that the fiat system is wrecked. And I'm going to launch something that beats it, that kills it in the way that uh, Hayek discussed, which is the slick way to basically uh, fix the money system. Because you do it in a sly way where they don't really know what's going on. Um, and you know, it's proof that they don't have any control over it because I saw these dumbass narratives. Oh, the uh, ETF's not gonna get approved. Gary Gensler's is gonna shut down the crypto industry. Oh yeah, okay. ETF that it got approved because Daddy Blackrock came in and threw the gauntlet down. There was no way they were gonna tell him no. And I was saying that, right? Um, but you know, people still think that the government actually has some control here. And, you know, that's becoming uh, objectively untrue. So Bitcoin price is going higher. Demand is going to increase. What does that mean? Here, here And here's where people, the BTCers and the core guys can are going to probably get upset or, you know, triggered or whatever or make fun of me. I don't give a shit. Um, one megabyte blocks don't work. So then it's not going to work. So let, let's see here. If everyone wants to own some Bitcoin on chain, are you going to increase the block size then? And what happens when you increase it? You're not going to increase it to, you know, uh, a gig. You're not you're going to do like some some uh, some uh, uh, wussy stuff like two megabytes or one point five or four or eight. You're going to do it in a measured approach. And then you got to like call people. You got to like ask folks opinions and shit. Um, no, that's not going to work because this thing is going so fast. And that's why I want to bring up Solana. Solana's top five coin market cap. Uh, it, it hit a low of like 12 bucks or nine bucks or something. And, you know, now it's 180 and uh, number five. And it, it's, you know, it's probably going to climb higher because uh, it has an on-chain economy. People don't like it. It's Ponzi schemes, meme coins, whatever. People want the end of the stuff because a lot of people recognize the debasement of the dollar. They recognize the fact, why am I working a job, uh, making these middling returns, having to pay uh, high costs like groceries, housing, mortgages, uh, all this rent, all this stuff, which is going up, but my salary isn't. Uh, why am I participating in this debt fiat system that's inflationary, getting wrecked, getting kicked in the face every day when I can just go buy an upside down cat and make a bag and then get out? And again, this is this is I mean, I'll I, maybe I'll do another video getting into more mechanics of it. I know people I know, especially the BSVers do not understand like economics, uh, supply and demand and like why this stuff happens. But yes, it is true. These meme coins are useless. But again, you guys are thinking in an in a old legacy boomer Web2 world. You guys are thinking, oh, there's no on, there's no like blockchain. There's no, we just work in fiat. You know, you sound like the people that were like, uh, 
oh, um, you know, uh, why, why would I email when I can fax? Why would I make a phone call when I can like ride my car down the street and like, or, or, you know, why would I send a letter when I can send a raven? That's, that's what y'all sound like. You don't understand that. Hold on. If there is a way I can participate in a monetary system that is not tied to my identity or a bank account or a nine to five bank or a uh, KYC, or, you know, I have money just sitting somewhere that I can actually spend 24 seven on something that, you know, maybe it's a meme coin, maybe it's a JPEG. I can purchase these things on the internet. You don't understand that people might buy that when they couldn't before. The money just sitting there. What is it doing? It's not moving. If I can move, it doesn't matter if you think it's um, a shit coin. It doesn't matter what you think. Yes, you can call it gambling. Maybe it is. It probably is gambling. It's degenerate. You can say it's degeneracy, but it's not your money. You don't get to pick what people do with their money. If people are going to ape into meme coins, let them do it. Doge is top 10 market cap, man. It's a meme coin. What does it do? Well, it actually does some stuff now, but it's 18 cent or 17 cent. It's not going to change, man. The stuff's only going to keep going up because the fiat system's wrecked. And they're just going to print. Interest rates have stayed solid, but uh, who knows? If they if they lower interest rates, I mean, that's more even more rocket fuel for this whole thing. So, what, again, and everyone wants scalable blockchain. And, you know, Solana does to a degree. BTC doesn't. ETH doesn't. I know ETH's trying, but, you know. Um, and then the other, the last thing, and this is where, and, you know, a lot of this stuff is cleared up that there is no really grand conspiracy against BSV. Folks can get mad if they say that. I don't give a fuck. Um because the actions are now explained, right? If you have someone who was uh, cosplaying as Satoshi and it's so absurd to you, you're probably going to be more rather obsessed with that. And that explains a lot of the activity on the core side. Not that there was some conspiracy against us. Um, now, if there is a social engineering campaign, it is the fact that uh, BSV, you should you should make fun of BSV as a shit coin. Because this thing has the same genesis block and shares the same hash power as BTC. So it is a fundamental thing. Sure. If it's a hundred bucks, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but if it gets to a thousand, if it gets to two thousand, if it gets to five thousand, um, look out because this thing's gonna suck hash power from BTC, and it's not. It's not. Doesn't become about ideologies, and it's purely profit seeking. So that is the reason, right? As long as it's on the same hash power, as long as it's producing blocks, as long as it scales, this thing is a threat. Um, it might be a pipe dream, but it still is a threat. People have to understand that, and that's probably the fact that you know wants to be that uh, the crypto industry wants to hide. Uh, so this thing does scale, and the more scaling comes into the purview, the more BSV is going to come into the purview. And this is why I believe you had a run up from thirty bucks to one hundred and ten, um, with a, from a pricing in that Craig is not Satoshi is going to lose his court case. So, you know, so what's next? Well, the more this on chain economy demand continues, I mean, someone was just posting about some coin that went to a billion dollar market cap overnight, like forty eight hours on Solana. It's not going to stop. It's going to keep going. The next one, what, 5 billion? The next one, 10 million? Seriously, um, it's not going to stop. I'm not telling you to go ape into the uh, shit coins of Solana. I'm just telling you what's going to happen. I don't know which one, obviously. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I don't, uh, you know, and that's also, you know, you're taking risk, right? Of course, there's always a risk with this stuff, but um, so yeah, but it's not going to stop, which means that the demand for a scalable blockchain is going to increase. Which means BTC, if you don't increase the block size, okay. Um, because I see more demand for BTC than ever. And I think it's going to keep rising because all, more institutions are going to buy in. More people are going to figure out what Sailor is doing and try to do the same thing. Because uh, you cannot have arbitrage. As soon as you see someone arbing, you're going to be like, oh, well, I want in too. I want to make I want to make a bag too. So that's going to happen. Um, so yeah. And also, the uh, last point about BSV is because of the uh, cultish nature nature and the you know the btc people thinking that bdsv is tied to craig well we're going to find out right because the question you guys need to ask is before that just ruling the price was 111 bucks what happens when bsv goes to 112 that's the question you need to ask it's like because at that point okay uh for a fact the market no longer the bsv ledger no longer cares about craig uh because um it's a, it would be at a higher price than before when it was when people thought it was uncertain and again, what I think is I think the, the sudden suddenness of the decision is what really caused the dip. And, you know, I could be wrong about that. Who knows? 
Uh, but I'm I'm actually glad that we got one so fast. I did not want this thing to drag out. And I was also glad that the judge said at some point that he, there was no way it was going to be uh, ambiguous, uh, his ruling. He said that there's no way I'm not going to rule on this. So uh, it's going to be clear cut, which it is. So, <laughs> so we can move on. I mean, uh, I know I feel better about it. A lot of people that I am friends with in this community feel the same way. Uh, <clears throat> people might call it delusion or whatever, but it's like, dude, um, you know, th a lot of things have changed in the last 14 months. Um, you know, we don't have the same views on a lot of this stuff. We don't, you know, we're not like tied to an individual. Uh, what the thing, the concepts and the, the assets and the things that we want with this uh, transcend a lot of stuff, right? And it's bigger than like, you know, just being internet money. It's bigger than being, um, you know, just an asset that you hold and number go up. It's bigger than that. I mean, we want something that basically breaks us free from this uh, debt slavery monetary system. And a lot of people don't like that. But the thing is, sorry, uh, you don't like the reality. The Genesis block has it in there straight up. And the way Satoshi wrote, especially now that we see the new writings, it was more than clear what, what he thought and what he was trying to do with the system. And he did it in the best way possible. So, yeah, um, I guess that's all I have to say. Um, I'm sure the comments are going to be fascinating, but, you know, um, I, and I want to get more into the whole time aspect of money and, you know, how we're free with time and, you know, what this what this ledger was actually meant to do. Uh, maybe in a, you know, future video. All right, but we'll leave it at that. Let me know a feedback. I'll see y'all in the next one.